So, right. so this is Tricia, and I think we're going to start with enforcement uh, intervention committee. Yes, EIC. I'm sorry. Yes, no, that's okay. Yep. It's okay. It's early. We're all just getting started. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and call the enforcement intervention uh, committee to uh, order. And could we please take roll to establish a quorum? Well, Tricia, let me take roll of the whole committee. Thank let you. Okay. Cloris, that is not needed since it's a board meeting. So um, just quorum for enforcement is um, appropriate at this point, and um, Tricia can do that as chair. All right, go ahead, Tricia. That was Great, that was my you. mistake when I I called you forward, Dolores. I'm I'm sorry for misleading you. Okay, thanks, Loretta, and thanks so so much, everybody, for being here today. So we'll go ahead and uh, call the roll. This meeting is being recorded. Do I'm sorry. Do I do that? Um, sorry, yes, this is Reza. You would do a roll call, you would do a roll call um, to establish a quorum. Uh, Lori, yeah, I see. Are we um, reordering in order to for, for Jovita to get her audio set up? Is that no, purposes? Dolores um, had a request to reorder and she reordered it. And when we opened it up, and EIC will go first. E nurse practice will go second, and then ELC will finish the day. There is no ledge. Right. Um. And so Hovita is going, I mean, sorry. So um, Trisha. Trisha will do a roll call um, attendance and establish a quorum for EIC. And um, Shannon is in the attendees, I believe, and will need to be elevated so that she can report out. And then we'll move into um, nurse practice. Okay. Great. So we'll go ahead and call roll. Patricia Wynn is here. Uh, Dr. Mary Fagan. Mary Fagan here. Thank you. Elizabeth Woods. She's not here yet. And David Lawler. David Lawler is here. Great. Thank you uh, very much. We have a quorum. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to public comment. So this item is only for things not on the agenda. Um, is there any public comment? Um, I guess we'll ask the moderator to go ahead and open up for public comment. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Dr. Sarah Giron would like to make a comment. I hope I pronounced that right. One second, please. You hear me? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Wonderful. Sarah Giron, I'm a practicing nurse anesthetist in Los Angeles County. I work for Kaiser Permanente. I have several, um, issues with the expedition of licensure, both of my students that I teach as well as nurse anesthetists trying to obtain employment in California uh, from out of state. Now, the licensure has been taking incredible amounts of time. I have a very experienced, safe practitioner with over 20 years of nurse anesthesia practice 
trying to obtain a California licensure from the BRN and is being denied because when she did attend school, she was unable to take a microbiology lab because microbiology did not exist. I would humbly ask this board to comment or at least put on future agendas some sort of pathway or plan for expediting licensure for both new graduates as well as experienced nurse anesthetists or nurses. We have over 40 nurse anesthesia openings up in Northern California, Kaiser Permanente. And unfortunately, we cannot hire anybody until they have licensure through the California BRN. Um, unfortunately, the bottleneck does seem to be with this licensure. Thank you. Thank you. Committee Chair Wynn, there are no other public requests for comments. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, and thank, thank you, Tricia, for... before we move on. Thank you, um, Lori. Thank you. To the public commenter, if they can send me an email, I'd like to discuss some of the issues that they're raising. Um, Loretta.melby at dca.ca.gov. That is L-O-R-E-T-T-A dot M-E-L B as in boy, Y at dca.ca.gov. Um, and I will give you some additional information and, and speak with you today if you want to reach out so that you don't have to wait for a um, subsequent board meeting. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lori. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move to item 9.2.1, which is review and vote on whether to approve the previous meeting minutes. I hope people have had a chance to review um, those minutes. They looked very complete to me. Um, uh, do, we, do we take public comment on the minutes? Yes, on every agenda item, we would take public comment. Thank you very much. And do we make a motion? Do we make a motion first? Uh, generally, yes, that would be the flow. You don't necessarily have to, but... Um... As long as you give public comment on every agenda item, that's the requirement, but generally the flow is for discussion, motion, public comment, vote. Good. Thank you very much. I'd like to go ahead and move approval of the minutes. I'll second. I'm sorry, I have barking dogs. Um, did I hear a second? Yeah, this is Mary Fagan, I second. Great, we have a second. Would you please go ahead and open public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Wynn, there are no public requests or comments. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thanks very much. So we'll go ahead and take this to a vote. Uh, Patricia Wynn votes yes. Dr. Mary Fagan. Mary Fagan, yes. Elizabeth Woods. Um, and David Lawler. He's not here. David Great. Lawler, yes. Great. Thank you all so much. So the mo so that motion passes. Uh, we're going to move to item. Uh, 9.3, which is information only. Tricia, before we move on to 9.3, we've had staff request a five minute recess. We're having some issues that we need to, to meet with. So if you can recess real quick for five minutes um, and we will come back at 9.15.
Great. Thanks very much. That's all. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, it is 915. We are opening back up in the enforcement investigation. Um, sorry, enforcement intervention committee. The reason that enforcement intervention committee was pulled to go first was um, the nurse practice chair has not um, arrived um, at the board meeting. We are still working with staff to reach out to get the nurse practice chair in attendance. Um, the EIC committee should wrap up um, in an expedited manner. We should be done, I would say, no later than 920, and we'll move right into nurse practice. And if, um, I, we know that on the agenda, it did say that nurse practice was going to start at 9 a.m. We hope that this has not inconvenienced anybody. Um, and if um, there is public comment that wants to be um, stated around this change, uh, we will allow for that as well. Um, so board moderator, open it up to public comment to see if anybody wants to address the reordering of the committee meetings today with EIC going first, followed by nurse practice. Thank you. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. <clears throat> I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Mary Adorno would like to make a comment. One second, please. the California Association for Health Services at Home. I have, um, are, will there be uh, items not on the agenda and opportunity to ask a question? Is, will, that, will this agenda reordering affect the items not on the agenda? No, it will not. Each one of the committees will be able to take um, items, uh, public comment for items on the agenda. We did take public comments for item on the agenda for the um, enforcement intervention committee. We will have one for the nurse practice committee when that starts immediately to follow. And we will also have a public comment period for the um, education licensing committee that will follow nurse practice. Perfect. Do we have any idea what time nurse practice might start? I would say 10 minutes tops. It should be Thank you. up and running by 930. Thank you. Looks Thank like you. maybe Betty is, is in the in the group. I, I presume they're working on getting her on the uh, the panel. So. Yes, she is in the attendees will elevate her and we'll be ready for the next committee. Tricia, you can move on Good. to your agenda item now. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lori, and thanks for the public comment. So um, this is the information only item. I do want to really thank staff for this really great staff report. It had so much um, helpful information in it. Uh, Shannon, um, are you going to present on it? Yes, I am. Uh, so I will pre I'll present both 9.3 and 9.4. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody. Um, so let me pull my agenda up. Um, so 9.3, it's information only, um, and it's the update on enforcement intervention and our investigations division. Um, and just some highlights through here. Um, uh, oh, most of our enforcement and investigation staff just recently attended um, the National Certified Investigator and Inspector training um, NCIT. Uh, they took the basic course. It was a three-day course. Um, and then um, they will also be taking the second week of November. There is a specialized course, which is a three-day course. And so a good portion of the um, enforcement and investigation staff will be attending that additional course the second week of November. Um, and 
we're getting great, great reviews on that course um, with CLEAR, and um, which is the Council on Licensure Enforcement and Regulation. Um, so uh, I took the course back in 2009, and from what I understand, it's still just an absolutely wonderful course. So uh, we're going through that. Um, we also, um, as before, we had the presentation from National Council, so we have started working with them on the pilot for the five-year study that they're going to go through. It'll be five years, and we'll be sending them information. I believe they're wanting it about every six months. Um, so we are working with our vendor Maximus to obtain that data and provide it to National Council. We're still continuing to map. We have OIO. Um, they're almost finished up with complaint intake there as well as probation. And then they will continue on with the remainder of the units within uh, the enforcement division. Uh, as always, we continue to recruit for our expert um, practice consultants um, and listed on the agenda item are a few areas that we are in more need than, than most, uh, which is the long-term care, the SNFs, the acute rehabilitation hospice, um, the ambulatory clinic, and um, as always, the cosmetic um, Botox laser arena. Um, the information's there. If anybody's interested in applying for our expert practice consultants, uh, there's more information as well on our website um, if you're interested um, and um, to check to see if you meet the criteria uh, to be one of our experts. Um, complaint intake. Uh, we have filled our vacant complaint intake manager uh, some years ago. If you recall, some of you uh, that we split that unit, it became so large we ended up now we have two complaint intake managers. So this is our second complaint intake manager that we've hired. Uh, her name is Alina Chef, and she started back on August 8th. Uh, and we are very, very pleased to have her. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to try to go through some highlights here. Um, investigations, we're still um, continuing on with the pilot with DFI, and we have just recently updated the, um, the pilot MOU, and uh, the changes uh, were approved and signed, and this will continue through December 2023. Uh, we're continuing to pretty much hold steady in our discipline unit uh, based on our cases with the HE's office and investigations. Uh, really no changes there. Um, we're working on some caseload distribution throughout the entire enforcement division. And then the biggest change of all, which um, if you see at the bottom of your agenda item, there are several um, vacancies uh, across um, we have identified um, areas or, excuse me, committee seats that they have extended their, their two four-year term limits. Therefore, um, we do have these vacancies now. And then you will see also in 9.4, we have um, very actively recruited and we have um, many positions to fill. So that will be coming um, for your approval to move forward in 9.4. Are there any questions on 9.3? It's a very complete report, Shannon. Thank you very much. Really helped a newcomer like me kind of get a sense of how the timing goes. So thank you for that. Yeah. You're welcome. I have just one quick question and it does um, bleed into 9.4 and that is how, how do you recruit? I was impressed with the quality and experience of the um, you know, applicants for these boards. And I just thought, I mean, you're doing a great job finding the right people. There's a, there's a few different ways we recruit. So we have, we have not only reached out to some of the other boards and bureaus, medical board, uh, you know, some of the, some of the other boards to get the um, board of Beha behavioral sciences, psychiatry, um, psychologist, uh, we've so we've done that. We've also during a renewal of licensure for our RNs. There's a question on there if they're interested in being a, an IEC member. We also ask if they're interested in being an expert consultant during renewal. And then um, on all of our social media platforms, we do have uh, social media uh, uh, that that goes out on Facebook, Twitter, I believe LinkedIn. Um, so we're we're trying to hit every every corner we can and and we've been pretty successful these last 
as you can see, based on um, the vacancy, well, not just the vacancy rate, but the, the appointees the, for recommendation in 9.4, there's quite a few. Great, thank you very much. Um, so this is information only. We still go ahead and open this up for public comment? Yes. Yes, okay. Great, thank you. So would the board moderator please open this up for public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. We'll mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. Pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Mary would like to make a comment. One second, please. Mary, go ahead. Hello. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, this is Dr. Mary Tahiri. I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I work with the uh, Department of Health, Los Angeles County. I'm an SEIU 720 member um, and I'm also a CANP member. Uh, my question is um, regarding the OPES memo. Uh, for the transition to practice requ requirements. I was Mary, wondering- Mary, okay. this is Lori, I'm sorry. Um, sure. This is not the agenda item for OPES. The Got OPES it. agenda item is on the practice committee and that will be to follow, I believe it's agenda item eight. Um, I appreciate well, it, I will, thank you. I will look at that and we'll take your public comment at that point, thank you. I appreciate it, thank you so much. You're welcome. Committee Chair Wynn, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thank you very much. So there is no action on this item except just a profound thank you, uh, Shannon, for your work on this. So we'll go ahead and move to item 9.4, which is discussion and possible action regarding appointment of intervention evaluation committee members. Shannon, I'm going to turn it over to you for presentation. You're muted. Sorry about that. I'm glad I'm on camera so you could tell that I was talking and not hearing you or not hearing me, excuse me. Um, okay, so 9.4, as you can see, there are several recommended appointments. Um, you were provided a package with their CVs um, and applications to review. Um, these are listed based on the IEC. So um, starting with IEC 2, we have Dean Rischel, who is a, a PhD public member, and Jonna Porter, an RN nurse member in IEC 3, James Luzano, MD, a physician member for IEC 3, Gia Gittleson, RN nurse member, IEC 4, Randolph, Randolph Holmes, MD, a physician member in IEC 4, Judy Speak, an RN nurse member, IEC 6, Richard Scaff, PhD, public member for IEC 6, Julius Muzenzi, MD, um, physician member for IEC 6, Andrew Berger, uh, PhD, public member, IEC 7, Joseph Ortiz, PhD, public member, IEC 9, um, I scroll down, there's so many. David Liu, MD, physician member, IEC 9. Bradley Webster, RN, nurse member, IEC 10. And Victoria Pontel, RN, nurse member in IEC 10. These are all new appointment recommendations. And um, I also want to point out, as you can see, some of the term expirations. Uh, they are staggered, some um, uh, end at June 30, 2025, and some June 30, 2026. 
uh, and I believe there's one June 30, 2024. This is to ensure that we do not have all of our members' terms ending at the same time, so we staggered them to avoid any conflicts of quorum in each of those IECs. Um, so um, I would like to request a motion to approve these to full board. Great. I will go ahead and move approval or recommendation of all of these proposed members. Um, is there a second? David Lawler, I second. Great. Thanks very much, David. So we'll go ahead and open this item up for public comment. I, I have a question first. Um, Please go ahead, Mary. Um, Shannon, one of the things in each of the um, applicants on the recommendation sheet and the, the review, there's a section that said the person has no conflict of interest. And on all of them, the response was no, which makes me think that there was a conflict of interest. It, am I interpreting that incorrectly or can you speak to that? Oh, you're muted again. Sorry about that. Um, no, they do not have a conflict of interest. That is one thing we do ensure um, with not only our IEC members, but with our expert consultants as well um, as our nurse support group facilitators. We have to ensure that there is no conflict of interest if they are in that position representing the board. Okay, because the way that this, we might just want to look at the way this form is worded because it says applicant has no conflict of interest. And then no, double and negative. Then, and then it's, it says no, and it should be yes, right? Right, right. And um, just so you know, uh, yesterday we actually started looking at that application form. We'll probably be editing it slightly. There are a couple areas that I, I think need to be updated as well. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that question, Mary. Um, appreciate it. Um, so would the board moderator please open for public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Wynn, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thanks very much. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to a vote uh, on that motion. Patricia Wynn votes yes. Uh, Dr. Mary Fagan. Mary Fagan, yes. Uh, Elizabeth Woods. Uh, David Lawler. David Lawler, yes. So that motion carries. Uh, and that is our last item of business. So I'm going to um, a call for adjournment, uh, item 9.5. We don't take a vote on adjournment, do we? Good, okay. Uh, Lori, I'm turning it back to you.